Mm. Maybe I'll... Uh, <laughs> that would have been funny if it was on purpose. Uh, maybe I'll say sitting. Maybe I'll uh, stand up. Who knows? Um, so I've been up here a couple of times, as I'm sure you all remember. Um, <laughs> turns out they do. Uh, so thanks for having me back again. Um, it's been a long, strange trip to quote one of the Grateful Dead. Anyway, um, this one's called Rarity. Hmm. Imagine you're standing at a covered bus stop, raindrops pattering the windows like the feet of children, sock-footed and running down the hall. Their laughter fades as you run your hands through your must hair, matted from the wind and rain. A chipped fingernail snags and you remember what you forgot, your umbrella. It's sitting in the hallway in a cane stand that was born as a bucket, spruced up with a bit of glue and wrapping paper from last year's miserable birthday party. Repurposed because buckets need new lives just like people. The handle is worn, oak or maybe spruce. The gold band is what has attracted you to it in the store. It glittered, caught your eye. Sorry. It glinted in the sunlit window of a local mini mall, nested with a dozen other worn wooden and plastic inclement weather protectors. It didn't look like the others. It didn't feel like the others when you held it. It was special, granted. It was just as special as an umbrella can be. But go with me here, it's a theme. You own it now. It's one of a kind, to you at least. Not that it's doing any good to you or soaked ass right now, but hey. You at least remember what you forgot, right? The bus stop is full of people waiting to get where they're going, all the while forgetting where they are. They have busy schedules just like you. She stands there, tapping her foot, watching her watch, feeling like everything is slipping away because she can't get on a bus. He types in a frantic email to his boss, letting him know he might miss the morning meeting. A single drop of water falls off his nose onto the keyboard of his phone, and he sighs. Just one more thing. The world is full of people who walk through their mornings, noons, and nights with their eyes closed. They ignore the sparkle and shine of everyday things that don't happen every day. You stare into the rain, waiting for the bus, but not disappointed or angry that it's late. It will get here when it gets here, like a wizard, exactly when it's supposed to. <laughs> I love you guys for laughing at that, thank you. You look up just in time to see a glimpse of the sun through the clouds, a shaft of light that barely illuminates a cardinal on a tree branch across the street. The sun fades just as the bird shakes his feathers to clear them for flight. The small creature flits away as the clouds close once more. The brief glimpse of nature at work and the way the universe speaks out at dark times to light the path makes you take pause. You close your eyes. The drumming from the rain mutes all other sounds. The cars passing, the people shoveling their feet. The tap, tap, tap of the keyboards drift into nothingness, and you wonder about the rare things in life. The cardinal sighting sticks the color in your head, red, red. The color of fire, passion, power, and strength. You remember what you've forgotten. Red, sleek, sexy. The 1961 Ferrari 250 GT California streaks through your memory. Briefly pausing to show a dark-haired youth in a fedora, gray vest, and a trench coat behind the wheel. The curves alight in your mind as if they were hand-hammered in Italy just for your eyes. The engine roars with anticipation for your foot on the accelerator. The steering wheel's leather covering will only respond to your touch. You adjust the mirror, tip to your hat to the valet, and speed away. Smoke obscuring the onlooker's view and leaving them feeling a bit confused at their disappointment that they can't take that vacation to Italy this year. Bow, bow, bow. Chick, chick, <laughs> Your mind's eye takes you to a small cafe in downtown Paris. Bohemians wearing black berets and cravats read out of black notebooks, smoke their thin black cigarettes, and sip their black espresso without a hint of irony. Posh ladies in expensive but common clothes stroll down the boulevard with bags around their eyes and arms. Small white poodles are pulled along behind them. They strain against the leashes, aching to go play in the park or a fountain. That rare treat when they get to feel like dogs instead of showpieces, where they get to frolic off the leashes in a fountain or field rather than riding around in an over-adored debutante's purse or being yanked down the cobblestone street. Your eyes rest upon a couple at a table, 
For all they know, they're alone in a restaurant at the top of the world. They stare into each other's eyes. Their coffee and croissant. Can't remember what's inside of them. Long forgotten. You can practically see the love flowing between them. Reds and pinks and blues. Hands lightly caressing hands. Fingers brushing hair out of faces. They will sit for hours chatting in silence, in reverence. They found the one that didn't end when all others did. Hmm. Leaving Paris behind, you head towards the beat. That 4-4 four, four, wumpa wumpa that you can feel in your bones. Your teeth begin to rattle as you drift closer to the DJ. His uncoordinated coordination in dropping stacks of wax on the ones and twos mirrors the heady dancers, ravers, and go-go's as they shimmy the night away. It's later than you thought. You need water. Your feet hurt. Your ears will be ringing for days, and you're pretty sure you just lost your car keys, but it doesn't matter. All that matters is the perfect beat. That confluence of drum and bass, who the hell needs treble? The sky begins to lighten behind the DJ. They planned it this way. The organizers. The angled orientation of the stage, pit and park, they all point east. The perfect sunrise. Because just before that great golden disc appears above the horizon, the beat drops. Wait for it. The DJ maneuvers his knobs, preparing the breaks and hips and hops. The dancers slow. They know what's coming. They pause to grab water, wipe the sweat from their young brows, and catch their breath. They hug the ones closest, not knowing if they met an hour or a millennia ago. It's all the same tonight. A meeting of e-minds, of texts and emails, grabbing rides and giving directions. Their feet twitch at the hint of a new break. Hands raise and ears open. They want to be ready. The buzz intensifies. The tension builds. You can feel it. The wanting, the desire to end a night of bliss with a ravegasm, an explosion of dance and sight and sound. The sun breaks the night in two. The beat hits, and everybody smiles. Back in the bus stop now. The sounds of the city come back to you as the woompa fades and the wind from your hair, the wind in your hair from your drag race subsides. Your eyes slowly open. The rain is letting up. It pays to take a few moments and remember the rare times, the rare things. Even if you've never held a four-leaf clover, looked into a baby's eyes, or found that perfect pair of jeans that lifts your butt just right, <laughs> you can still imagine the feeling. The times when you can look into a lover's eyes for a moment and find that hours have gone by. You're very lucky. That last one isn't rare, but the feeling is no less ecstatic. Things that can never come again. Things that were mistakes. The penny where Lincoln got his penny picture taken standing on the ceiling or the inverted Jenny stamp. The shine you take to a particular umbrella or the sighting of a red bird on a dark day. These are the things that make life itself a rare confluence of events that if not for the mixing of a few particular amino acids in a puddle of goo so many moons ago, I would not be telling you this. You would not be hearing this. And the 1961 Ferrari GT California would have never been made. And that thought makes me really sad. <laughs> you forget what you've remembered too often. We need to learn to recognize the moments that make life worth living. What is it about rare things, the majesty of owning them, of experiencing them so that you can tell others? Or maybe you just want to keep it secret and safe with yourself. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just a guy on a stage. Maybe it's something else, something less tangible. Maybe it's the feeling of being special that you talked to a fire tornado for two hours on the playa or got a personalized CD of the set you just danced to. Rarity comes in many forms from many places. It's a special thing, a spark that lights and pushes you forward. Treasure it, if, treasure it as if it won't come again. Use it like it won't be made again. And live it like it won't be experienced again. Because it may not. <laughs> 